after cancelling our honeymoon and considering divorce, when my wife made out with a female friend at our wedding? I, 24 male, recently got married this last week to my wife, 24 female, ex, let's call her Sarah. Me and my wife have been together for four years and have only had one major issue. My wife is a drinker. She only drinks about once a week, but usually drinks way more than she can handle. When we first got together, I realized she has a habit of making out with random women when she is drunk. Now, I don't think this is sexy or exciting. I myself view this as cheating. After the second time I caught her about a few months into dating, I sat her down and told her that absolutely would not be okay as long as we are in a committed relationship. It took many conversations for her to understand that I was serious and viewed it as cheating. She promised to stop, but insists that she didn't cheat. She was good about cutting back on drinking and being more mindful of me. However, over the years, I caught her kissing two other women. Once a random acquaintance, and the last time about two years ago was with her best friend turned maid of honor, Brooke, 24, female. Important piece of information after I caught her the last time, I had a complete and total breakdown. And it took her coming to my therapy sessions and couples counseling for her to understand how badly she hurt me. I told her if it ever happens again, regardless of the circumstances, I was out. This brings us to the present. The wedding day comes around and it was perfect. Happiest day of our lives and whatnot. Then the reception. We of course got pretty drunk. Not blackout or belligerent, but definitely drunk. At some point, my wife asked me to get her a pair of comfortable shoes. On my way back, I see my wife with Brooke's tongue down her throat in the middle of the dance floor with her other bridesmaids. I stomped my way into the reception, pushed Brooke out of the way and said something along the lines of, What the heck are you doing? At this point, everyone stopped and looked at us, and I just threw the shoes and walked out. Sarah chased me out bawling hysterically. Since this happened, I cancelled our tickets and hotel reservation for our honeymoon, and I'm strongly considering divorce. My lovely wife has gone from begging to crying to name-calling. She ultimately decided I was a massive a-hole for embarrassing her at our wedding and throwing away our relationship over nothing. I think I'm just done this time. She's hurt me so many times and can't even see what she's doing wrong. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You made it clear that it wasn't behavior you wanted involved in and she didn't listen. Yep, not the a-hole. And this thing ace up. You didn't embarrass her. She embarrassed you by cheating at your reception in front of everyone. Now she's trying to bully you into staying with her and even having to apologize to the cheater. Shaking my head. She does not love or respect you. Talk to a lawyer as soon as you can before you risk more and more financially. Even if Opie didn't get upset and throw the shoes, it's mad embarrassing to be so sloppy drunk at your wedding that you make out with anyone but the groom slash bride. Those were a lot of red flags. And you married her anyway. She knows how you felt about this and she did it anyway. She needs to get some help with the alcohol. That seemed to be when she messed up. What a mess. It honestly makes me wonder if he only knows about the two other times. I feel like there could be multiple times she's done this that he isn't aware of, due to not being around. For sure. Her takeaway from those therapy sessions of OP pouring his heart out was that that she should send him to another room first. Not the a-hole. Get an annulment. She has no respect for you and will continue this because you keep forgiving her. May not need an annulment if the paperwork wasn't filed yet. Yeah, he should have called the efficient right away. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend's fiancé that she cheated on him? Jess, our four homegirls, and I went to Vegas for Jess's bachelorette party. We had a great time the first day until we returned to our hotel at night. Another friend, Maria, didn't tell us that she had paid for male strippers to come to our suite, and that immediately made it uncomfortable for me and some others. We never agreed to this, nor we were interested. We wanted a girls' weekend. They started dancing, of course, and Jess eventually slept with one of the performers, oral in front of us, then went into one of the bedrooms, leaving the door open. Me and two other girls left and booked a small room for us three that same night, while Maria, Jess, and another homegirl stayed. The three of us thought of leaving Vegas, but didn't want to come home because our partners might question why we came home so soon, since most of our boyfriends know each other. The next morning, we all got breakfast together and guess who joins? The male stripper who banged one of my friends. And it was so damn uncomfortable. Afterwards, we all met again in the initial suite and had an argument with each other. I have never heard of girl code when it comes to cheating on our partners. And just used every goddamn cliche of what happens in Vegas. And that is normal for bachelor parties. Pretty much all BS that I see in movies or read from social media. She eventually started crying and talking about her life and I just simply didn't care. 
It has completely destroyed our friendship. And now me and the other girls have discussed the possibility of not continuing as her bridesmaids. One of them has told me that we should still go to the wedding and then cut ties after. But I don't know. My conscience can't hold us in. And I feel like it is the right thing to do because I would want that. I want to believe that what I'm doing is a moral good. Am I wrong? How common is this for bachelor and bachelorette parties? Other details if it helps. One bridesmaid didn't go with us, and she was in our side about what happened. She's willing to back us on what we decide to do. Since we've returned home, Marie has been harassing us about being fake friends in our group chat. I never really liked that woman anyways. My friends and I also took pictures of them at breakfast for evidence and screenshotted Maria's texts. Not the a-hole. You have to tell her fiancé. If someone did it to you, you'd want to know. Save him from a lifetime of this. And she already showed how much you mean to her calling you fake friends for having morals. Tell him. Either together with friends or individually, how you need to tell him. Thank you. My homegirls who left with me also believe in telling him together, which I'm sure we will. Doing the right thing can be hard. If it wasn't, everyone would do it. But these choices come along only a few times in life and come to define you as a person. Not the a-hole. No, obviously it's not normal to sleep with a stranger before you're due to be married. She cheated on her fiancé, and he deserved to know. Don't let her manipulate you into keeping this a secret. My friends and I are around 23 to 25, and I'm kind of glad we got to see this early on. I really do think it's because Jess and I are childhood friends. Thank you for not making me feel like a crazy person. Tell the fiancé now. He'll hate you, but he'll hate you more for not telling. Ask me how I know. Yep. I broke contact with all the friends who basically covered my ex's cheating. I would have been overjoyed if someone would have told me. That way, at least I wouldn't have to find out passing her phone when the dude she cheated with asked if we already broke up and if he could write her on her actual number now. Damn coward couldn't even face me once to this day. Not that I cared about him or her, past the point I realized what was going on. That it's normal for bachelorette parties. Tell her and Maria if it's so normal for bachelorette parties, then they can tell her fiancé. Since, you know, it's normal and it totally won't get mad about it. Not the a-hole. Exactly. If it's so normal, tell the future husband. Oh wait, it's not. Not the a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for calling off the wedding because I'm suspicious what my fiancé did at her bachelorette party? 27 male and 28 female here. I decided to call off the wedding after some suspicious events happened at my fiancé's bachelorette party. We were going to get married next week on Saturday and had our bachelorette parties this week. Me and the boys hang out together at a friend's place, chatted and played games. My fiancé and her bridesmaids decided to go to Mehane. Winehouse is a traditional Turkish entertainment place. I called and texted her that night, but there was no reply. My gut feeling screamed something was wrong, so I decided to ask about it from a friend of mine. I know her through the family and she's not as close with my fiancé as other bridesmaids. She told me they went to a club, a very nasty one at that. There are no stripper clubs in Turkey to my knowledge, but that specific place they went is just nasty. I went there for a New Year's party the past, and that was the craziest thing I've witnessed. It's no different than a brothel. I asked how come they went to that club instead of Mehane. She told me others changed their mind on the way, but she did not go as she did not like clubs at all. I get a reply from my fiancé late in the morning and told me they stayed at another bridesmaid's place after getting drunk in Mehane. I asked her if everyone is there, and she said yes. Now the problem is, that bridesmaid's place is almost two and a half hours away from that place. There is no way seven girls were able to go together to that place at midnight, especially when public transport was not available. Taxi is out of question due to the cost and capacity. I asked one of my friends to call his girlfriend who is another bridesmaid. She told him she went back to her place and others just went to different places. There are inconsistencies all over. I face cams my fiancé right away in WhatsApp, but she said she would call me once she is available. She called me some minutes later, but she was outside, and I'm pretty sure it was not the district that bridesmaid lived in. I confronted her about it once she came back, but she could not give any satisfying answers to my questions. It became, I must have said it wrong first, than other bridesmaids. Except my female texted me confirming things all at once. It was so obvious there was something fishy here, and they were coordinated by my fiancé. Alarms were ringing in my head and yesterday I decided to call off the wedding. No one explained to me what happened that night clearly. When they do, there are inconsistencies all over. I announced it in friend groups and family groups. She's going crazy right now, but still, there's no single satisfying answer about what happened that night. I was even told not to be an insecure guy, but there was just no way. 
Everything points to at least something fishy happened there, and they are trying to cover it. My friend whose girlfriend was bridesmaid has also decided to break up with her. It is chaos all over. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Turkish person here. Emma Hani is usually for a man to pick up a woman. And yeah, self-explained. It's usually not a place where someone would go and celebrate a bachelorette party. A club? Maybe, yeah, but everyone has a different story in where they went. Why did she say they went there, but the other girlfriends say she went home? Things don't add up. Oh, by the way, Turkiye has a lot of strip clubs, so I don't know what kind of club they went to, but they exist there too. Wow, I had no idea there were strip clubs. I went to most popular clubs in both Istanbul and other major cities, but did not see even one. As for the Mehani part, it was a really small place where people can eat Turkish appetizers, drink ragki and enjoy the music. I was the one who recommended the place actually. I do not know if other Mehanis are as you said. To clarify, my home city is Izmir. I don't know how it works in Istanbul, but in Izmir, Mehanis are more a pickup place. Back in the 60s to 80s, it was more like enjoying the music and the belly dancers, but not anymore. Men go there usually to cheat on their wives and vice versa. Yeah, Turkey is more of a conservative country, but there are plans of strip clubs, etc. I would advise you to ask more from her friends. She probably isn't a work of getting their story straight, but it's worth a try. If she can't be honest, maybe you should consider that you dodged a bullet with her. Not the a-hole. If you really want to satisfy your suspicions, ask to see her phone. Then look at a GPS and recent spots visited. I asked to see her phone, but she rejected it. Let me guess. If you trusted me, you would not ask for my phone. Are you a psychic? It's what they always say when trying to deflect. She went home with some dude. They all told different stories, then lied at the same time. Not the a-hole. Someone on Reddit with a spine. Good for you. Demand a real explanation and non-restricted access to her phone, or she is free to lie to someone else in her next relationship. Don't let her trickle truth or gaslight you. Her story is a bunch of BS. Last story. Am I the a-hole for having a come-to-Jesus moment and calling off my wedding? 31 female. I have no idea how or why I overlooked so many things throughout my 8-year relationship. But yet, here we are. But I can't tell if I'm wrong for this. So last night, I told my future husband that I didn't know if I could go through with our wedding in 2025. He's in shock, as am I. My fiancé treats me great. He's kind. He matches my energy. He makes sure I'm taken care of in a material sense. He's handsome and smart and funny. He is, and probably always be, my best friend. But I'm just now starting to see how deep-rooted his mommy issues are, along with financial issues as well. Impulse control. He basically acts like a preteen wanting a shiny new toy whenever it gets a paycheck. I only just started to see how truly bad it was when we moved closer to his mom, a woman who had no hand in raising him. He was a ward of the state from age 8 to 17 when he went to live with his mother's family. He reconnected with his mother from that point. Since we have moved closer to her, he thinks the sun shines out of her behind and has defended her actions thoroughly. She had a means to take care of him, but she ultimately decided she didn't want to be a parent anymore when he turned eight and left him with some random stranger, one of her acquaintances, to go see her own mother out of state and just never came back. That's how he ended up in foster care, but she has him convinced that she was escaping an abusive relationship and it was the only way to keep him safe. I argued that she could have brought him with her, but you know. Anyways, since we now live right down the street from his mom, it's like he's reverted back to teenage years. He calls his mom before making any important decisions and follows her advice instead of mine, even if it's most certainly the wrong choice that affects both of us. He started sending all of his packages to her house as well, which gives her an excuse to show up here whenever she wants to unannounced. And he sees no issue with his open-door policy. She doesn't even knock. She just opens the door like she owns the place and rummages our fridge or drinks all of our coffee. Since we moved here, he has been in Facebook Marketplace daily, looking for new things to buy himself. And like, his mom enables it so bad. If I say that's an irresponsible purchase, she will double down and say, well, I think you deserve it, honey. You work hard. Treat yourself to something nice. He has borrowed money from her twice, like $20 for gas. And he always pays her back $50 to $100. And despite him treating me the same and still going out of his way to make me happy, I'm starting to become repulsed by him. Now, before anyone mentions it, I've brought this up to him. I've tried communicating several times that his behavior is affecting both of us. And while I understand he's happy to have his mother in his life again, her presence is making him act childish. And he's regressing because of her. 
He will say, I understand what you mean, and do much better for a week or two just to slowly sink back into it. So, I called off the wedding last night. I told him that I couldn't go through with marrying him because I couldn't handle his behavior anymore. I didn't sign up to marry a man with deep-rooted mommy issues who makes decisions with mommy's go-ahead that directly affect me. I told him I would be moving. He's now saying he will go no contact with his mother and that is sorry, but I told him the damage is already done, and I can't morally allow him to go no contact with his mom for my sake. I told him there are plenty of women who won't mind this, and that I'm sure he will find someone who doesn't mind his mother, but I personally hate the witch and don't want her near me or mine. He's been sulking understandably, since I called everything off and begging me to reconsider. But I don't think I can. I have never been more turned off in my life, and I'm not sure I can ever look at him the same. Or a chance that woman being in my life under any circumstances. Because she's toxic, and he acts toxic when she's around. Not the a-hole. Be grateful that you figure this out before marriage. Before marriage and kids. Then you'd be court-ordered to talk to each other. I hope you move far, far away from them. Not the a-hole and you're saving yourself a lifetime of frustration, anger and resentment. Congratulations on figuring this out before you got married and had kids.